Hello, today we're going to be going over to the coach with you. Pretty much we're going to be starting right up front here. Pretty much this light switch here is just going to control the front lights right here. This guy here is just pretty much going to be storage. And it's also how you could get to check your hydraulic fluid. If you ever go to check the hydraulic fluid for the hydraulic system, you do have to make sure that anything that runs on the hydraulics has to be in the more or less closed position. So like all the jacks would need to be up and I believe the main slide is also on the hydraulic. Those all need to be brought in before you check that. So pretty much the only time you would check that is when it's hooked to your tow vehicle. Over here on the side we're going to have our pretty much our leveling device here. Pretty much when you first get, you're going to turn this guy on and you're going to hit pretty much the front because we're going to want to extend them to get it off the tow vehicle. Once you've got it off the tow vehicle, you're going to make sure the tow vehicle is pulled forward and then you would hit auto level. From there, it's going to do what we like to call our dance and it's going to pretty much level out the camper. If any issue will occur, this will start flashing red and it will tell you that what the issue is here. Most of the times you'll get an out of stroke uh, air code. A lot of what that means is just that the whatever one was trying to extend out was overextended. From there, you're just going to put some blocks under it, re-level again. Can't actually comb through with our arrow keys. We're going to push up. You got manual level. Pretty much the only time you're going to go in and really mess with the manual leveling is if you just want to kind of do a little changing um, for where you're at. Uh, just know, though, whenever you go in, next time you hit auto level, it's going to go back to its main memory. Next, you're going to have auto retract. Pretty much what auto retract does, if you hit enter, it will start retracting all the jacks on the coach. The only time you're really going to use this is whenever you are once hooked up to the tow vehicle. Next, you have auto hitch. Pretty much with the auto hitch, what it will do is it will set the camper to the last unknown unhitched position as long as the batteries were not disconnected. Pretty much it raises the rears and it will set the front where you know you kind of unhook from. You usually have to do a little fine tuning with the front uh, either by hitting the retract button in the front or extending it, raising and lowering, kind of things along that nature. Next, we go back to the ready screen. If there are any other kind of questions about this, they do have a little panel right here that kind of talks about it, the leveling system. And there should be a packet or a manual inside to kind of talk about it as well inside the envelope. And then down here we have our battery. It's an AGM style 27 series. You do have the option to install a second battery. The reason why you have AGM is because this guy is solar powered. And then this guy up here is going to be for your inverter. There is a switch inside to turn that on and off. Pretty much you're going to be using this guy. Whenever you're going down the road, you want to keep the fridge on. Uh, what this will do is it converts 12 volt to a 110 to keep that fridge going for you. Nice thing is you got the solar panels to kind of help keep those batteries charging as you're going down the road. Next inside here, you got to have our spare tire, our control panel, pretty much for the solar panel. Pretty much it just communicates and it, you know, the batteries get to a certain level. This will allow the current to come through from the solar panels to charge the batteries. This guy here is going to be your battery disconnect. Pretty much you're going to do this guy anytime you are storing the camper. What it does is it just connects the camper from the battery so nothing drains the batteries in case a light was accidentally left on or anything along that nature. The solar panel would still charge the battery if this is not on. Next is going to be our lights here. You'll see some of these through your coach. It's just got this little knob here. This is a motion sensor. Pretty much got a one hash mark where the light will continuously stay on. The circle is going to be off. And then a two hash mark is going to be the motion sensor setting. Pretty much when you open this door, that light will pop on for you automatically. Inside here is going to be where our little water compartment station is located. You do have your filter. Uh, the filter is located inside. We did not put this in at, in at this time. You have your two valves here for the black and gray. That's going to be for the rear side or the front side of the coach. Uh, the gray here pretty much controls the um, washer drain and then the bathroom sink and shower. 
And then the black tank is just going to be for just the black. This guy here is going to be for your black tank flush is actually going to be for the rear uh, black tank. The black tank flush for the front one is going to be located down here. You do have your outside sprayer, hot and cold water. It is just a simple quick connect to come in and out. You got your satellite cable hookups here. Down here is pretty much where you would hook up for your city water or to fill the fresh water tank. Okay, you're always going to make sure you use a pressure regulator at the water spigot first, then your hose. Then from there, you're just going to turn these knobs to what you're wanting to do. So if you're using the fresh water tank, you're going to turn these knobs to power fill tank. From there, you got your water hose here hooked up, turned on. It's going to start filling the tank for you. Once the tank is full, there's an overflow tube underneath that the water will start coming out of. Generally, you do want to watch the monitor inside. When it's full, shut it off. If you're trying to use the city water, pretty much we just want that direct feed. You're going to still hook up to the same white port. From there, you're going to turn your knobs to the city water. Pretty much right now, we actually have this guy set on dry camping because we were using the water in the fresh water tank to test systems and make sure there were no leaks along those tanks. And there is an owner's manual inside for that as well. You do have a switch here as well. That light switch is for the... Oh, sorry, thought those were lights. My apologies. Overlooked. It's for an extra, it's another light that's inside the compartment somewhere. Pretty much our furnace. You got your intake and outtake. You don't want to put nothing in front of this. Do you recommend getting mud dauber screens to put over this to keep the bugs and uh, wasp out of there? Pretty much here is going to be the water heater. You do have the options of electric or gas. Um, the gas option is controlled from inside. Outside is your switch here. It's on and off. This is going to be your pressure relief valve. You're always going to make sure you relieve the pressure when you go to take out your anode rod. The anode rod pretty much attracts the impurities in the water, so it'll attack the rod, not the tank, because you have a steel tank. This guy will start off the size of a dime and will work itself down to the size of a coat hanger. Once it gets down to that size of that coat hanger is when you want to replace that guy. How are we going to know when it's getting down there? Well, we're going to be draining this tank every time, so you're going to take that guy out to drain it, and you're going to be able to inspect that anode rod. Quick step back, our fresh water drain is going to be located right down here. It is a two-inch, pretty much a two-inch drain valve. It will drain the water out pretty quickly for you. As you see, I did have some water in the systems. Was unsure if you guys were doing a in-person walkthrough, so I had water in the systems to show you that. Next, we do have our low point drains. These guys are going to be located down here as well. Pretty much got your red and blue. Pretty much hot side, cold side. Whenever you're done camping, if you're pulling this thing along, open up those valves, open up a faucet, usually in the bathroom. As you're driving home, that air is going to flow through, push any excess water out so you won't have any stagnant water sitting in, the, in your tanks. And then we do have our dump here for our first couple tanks up front. We do have a notice sticker here. It's to ensure that you check the lug nuts of the tires. I believe up front the sticker says that you want to torque them to 120 foot-pounds, which I have done. Uh, the sticker here is just to make sure that you do check those at 50, 100, and 200 miles. And then you always do want to make sure you keep the tire pressure topped off at the recommendation on the tire. I believe these guys were at 80 PSI. Back here is going to be where our back drain is going to be. You're going to have a black and gray valve also. That's going to be located right inside here. Uh, pretty much the rear bathroom, sink, and toilet is going to be going straight to the black tank. The gray tank here is for your kitchen sink. And this guy just twists on. Next, you do got your 50 amp power cord. It is yours to take with you. This guy here is just a warning sticker that if you decide you're going to try to wire in your own plug at home, this is at least the recommendations that is needed. You do not want to try to hook this up to a 240, like a dryer plug or a, a welder kind of plug. You will fry everything in your camper. Please be mindful of that. 
Pretty much inside here, on both sides, you're going to have both double doors here to open up to the compartment space here. You pretty much got the same space on both sides as well. You do have a 110 plug on this side. You do have a 110 plug on the other side as well and a light switch. I will show you that once we get to the other side. You do have the option for a backup camera and it's pre-wired. Simple use of plug and play. For the back compartment area back here, pretty much you do got your slider drawer area. Pretty much to do that, you're just going to lift this guy and pull open. This guy only does go so far out, it will stop. If you wanted to take it out further, you can usually lift and you can bring it out just a hair further. You don't want to try to put too much weight on this so on this end, if you have it further out than its stop point, you can cause damage. You got the ladder to the roof. It is recommended you're going to want a step stool unless you are super tall. Uh, this guy is just mainly to go up and inspect the roof to make sure the sealant hasn't created air bubbles or popped, or over time they just kind of dry out and get cracked. Uh, if so, just want to kind of clean the surface and use a, a lap sealant to reseal. You are able to go over that previous lap sealant a couple of times, usually if you have to do it more than two or three times over the course of how many years you own it. At some point, it is recommended that you want to peel it all off and just do a complete reseal. Pretty much we had the other side here. Like I said, we had our light switch here. This guy gives you a little ambiance light here on this side. And then our other 110 plug. You do have an LP Quick Connect down below. This is so that if you had a camping style barbecue grill it is quick connected so that you could have you know an outside pit if you wanted to don't go to just uh walmart or lowe's and just pick up a propane style grill those guys are usually uh ideal for a higher setting of propane these are preset at usually about 13 water columns um so you that's why i say you want to look for a camping style barbecue grill you do have the other sh notice sticker here on this side you just want to make sure that you are aware that you are mindful of your tires make sure they are being torqued i have seen situations where tires have gone or come off going down the road because the customers did not tighten them or check them over that period of time we're going to kind of move along here we do have our speakers outside speakers to show you how to turn these on and operate those from the inside you do have a 110 plug out here your water hose on the other side will also connect right here to our little quick connect spray port Then here on the other side, you got one another most essential lights. We got our TV mounts. I'm going to be installing for you guys here after I get done with your uh, virtual walkthrough. Uh, your swing down will be up in here, and you got your connections here for that TV right here. Back behind this panel, there is a pretty much your control board that controls everything in the coach. Uh, you actually can get an app for your phone. It will ask you to download or put a password in. The sticker for that is going to be located behind this panel on that board. And then inside here is going to be where our propane tanks are located. You have two 30-pound tanks. You have a handle down here. You just pull it back. It will slide out. This is so whenever you got to go refill. Pretty much, we do always recommend having one tank on and one tank off. That way you know when one of the tanks is empty. You do have the regulator here. Right now it is reading green because it shows us we have propane flow. When the tank is empty, it will show red if both tanks are on it will automatically start pulling from the other tank but you won't know that this other tank is empty unless you come out here and look pretty much you'll come out here and look your indicator is going to read red as you see there's a little notch here telling us what tank we're using all we got to do is just flip it to the other side and it would start pulling from the other tank take this guy off and go get it refilled if you have to refill this back tank, you do have to take everything out. So pretty much once you loosen all of this stuff here, this spindle rod here will unscrew so you can pull that out so you can have easier access to take this tank out.
So you were pre-wired for the backup camera. You are also pre-wired for side cameras. If you wanted to look and getting side cameras as well, it is already pre-wired for that. All right, next, pretty much we're gonna come on. We're gonna step inside. Before so, we're going to kind of show you your steps here real quick. They are fairly simple. Uh, these guys here just are going to lift and go in. It is really nice. These guys are actually on a on like a strut, so they actually kind of help glide with the assistance of putting them in and out. You can literally practically pull it open and close with one finger. Uh, pretty much so, these guys just sit here inside. They sit on the track, uh, pretty much right on, on the lip. And when the door is closed, it keeps it secured so it isn't bouncing all over the place as you're going down the road. While we're here, these guys here, so you can adjust your feet. Depending on your location, those may have to be adjusted out or in. Alright, if you like, we will step on inside. Pretty much, we will start right here at our control panel. It's going to be located right inside our first compartment here, or our first cabinet when we come inside. You do have your inverter here. Like I said, you're only going to turn that on and use it whenever you're going down the road. Uh, Pretty much you have your main ceiling lights, entry light, which is just, uh, read that one of those. it's going to be our step light underneath, my apologies. Then you got your hall light, you got your awning lights, you have a step light, which is going to be this guy right here, and then this one here is the connect. So like I was saying, there's that app that you can get on your phone. When you go to do that, you would have to push this button to turn it on to connect it to, to the system. And then once again, you would have to scan that, scan that QR code on the sticker that's on the control board. Next, we have our option for the gas for the water heater, our water pump, and our tank heaters. The tank heaters are little 12 volt heating pads on the bottom of the tanks to just kind of keep them warm during colder weathers. Um, one thing to note though is usually once it usually gets in the low 20s and teens, these guys will struggle to try to keep those tanks warm enough so they wouldn't potentially freeze. So just please keep that mindful. Next we have our awning to extend retract. I'm going to show you that here in just a minute. Next you have your main. Your main is going to be your two main slides right here. This is on the hydraulic system. The one control will bring both slide rooms in. Next you have the bedroom. And then as you see here, it says ODS. That stands for off-door side. So that is going to be the bedroom on the off-door side. So that would end up being the slide on this side of the coach. And then our last switch is going to be for door side, which is going to be obviously the door side of the coach and the back bedroom as well. Whenever you go to bring this slide in, do make sure that the bedroom or the bathroom door is closed and snap locked. I will show you that once we get back there. If not, the door is liable to pop open during travel and can cause damage. So we're going to go ahead and bring out this awning so you guys can take a look at that. It's going to press and hold the extend. And it's going to bring it on out. As you can kind of hear, it's still a little sticky. It has been open before, but due to the hot weather, it's just kind of hot. So it's kind of stuck together a little bit. Pretty much you'll open this guy up usually all the way, like so. And then you want to bring it back to help release that flap. Just like so. And then there you go. Pretty much your awning is ready to go. You do actually have pitch adjustments. You can see it right there, the sticker on there. It says pull down to adjust the pitch. I'll show you on this side just because it's a little easier to get to. But pretty much all you're going to do is just take this guy and you're going to pull him down. And then if, as you see, you will not have a pitch to where it is supposed to be a shade protectant. Uh, most people usually have it out during the rain, but it will rinse off to the one side or the other. With that being said, you do always want to make sure to take a note that if you are going to a friend's lot, going camping, or going floating, taking a nap, going to the store. If you're leaving your campground, it's just best to go ahead and bring it in. Better safe than sorry. Uh, one reason is you just don't know when a strong gust of wind may come along or a pop-up storm. Okay, so please just always be mindful of that.
Those winds can cause damage to both the awning and the camper if you are not careful. Pretty much we'll bring this guy back in. A lot of times you are able to watch him, uh, but usually you can also hear him usually hit the side of the camper once it's all the way in. So pretty much our inside here, this light switch here. Oh. She might have the cleaner may have shut a light off on me. So I'm pretty positive as a light switch. This guy here is going to be your max air. Pretty much this is going to turn the fan on above the stove area, up on the ceiling. This guy here is going to be for your main air conditioner here in the living room area. So pretty much when you cycle through, it's going to be off. Then it will have fan low, fan high. Cool high, cool low. And these two settings, it's just going to continuously sit there and run. Once you have it in the auto setting, cool low auto and cool high auto, it will automatically shut on and off to your temperature setting, which is going to be controlled by the arrow keys. And then your last option was going to be the furnace before it goes to the off position. Next, we're going to go ahead and step up here towards the bedroom area. So inside the bedroom area on the back side here, you do have a fire escape window. I do recommend feed first. You've got your blinds as well. We come down and we'll go up. Let's try to put that down so it stays a little cooler in here. Pretty much uh, your area to install a TV if you wanted to. Your TV antenna booster is also located back here. As you see, the green light is on right now. If we turn that off, pretty much we lose TV signal, but not only that, the radio signal also weakens. So you always do want to make sure that is in the on position. You got your dresser down below. You do have a 110 outlet here on the side as well. Inside here is where our pretty much our stackable washer and dryer could go. You got the two separate plugs for each one. Your drain, and then your hot and cold or cold hot and cold uh, on the other side. Oh. There is a lock to lock this side on the floor. You always do want to make sure that is locked during travel. Inside here, we got our king system here. Uh, pretty much it says it communicates, but this is also the Wi-Fi. I'm pretty positive that's actually what our switch is going to be to. It's not a light. It's a Wi-Fi. My apologies. Uh, but then you got your shoe rack, clothes rack. This guy here, you can just turn on by hand. So you have each individual switches on each side for the reader lights. You got a window on each side as well. Over here and show you that. Each side has a 110, but this is the only side that has the USB hookup for charging. Pretty much so. You got your oh the ambiance light on the back is one of the switches, the other switch is for lights there. Then you do have storage. Not much storage, but there is some storage underneath. Pretty much that's where our motor is to bring a slide room in and out. Our thermostat here for the rear pretty much operates the same way as the other one. Um, the only thing that this one does not do, it does not give you the option for the heat. Okay, only the main and the front will do that. And then we have our light switch. You do have central back air. And it does have all the attachments for that. Inside the bathroom area, you got your toilet. 
uh, pretty much with the toilet, whenever you're going to need water to do your business, you're going to lightly press on this pedestal to add water. Once you've done your business, you would push it all the way down to flush. It will always leave water in the toilet. I do always recommend that you have some kind of liquid in that toilet, either water or antifreeze. Uh, if it's going to be longer than 14 days, I would honestly recommend trying to put antifreeze in there. Uh, the only reason why is because uh, that water can get stagnant, but over time it will stain the toilet. Uh, another thing that you can also do that for the cleaner, if you take nonstick cook spray and spray the bowl of the toilet, helps everything slide down easier and makes it easier clean. Pretty much bathroom sinks for self-explanatory. Got your, your uh, shower here. Nice little shower head. Uh, this pretty much stops the flow of water because you want to try to conserve your water. Uh, nice. You do have a bigger tank. It is a 10-gallon tank. Uh, but the average American uses 38 gallons of just hot water. So just be noted to that. Uh, you do have your light switch in here on this side. And then your fan control. We're up above here. And it does label closed or open. And that's going to be all that for that. All right, if you step on down, back down the stairs, pretty much on the wall here. We're going to have our controls for the ceiling fan. One thing to note is there is no light on the ceiling fan. You can look and see there isn't one, so this guy does not really do anything. Uh, this is just the one controller that I had. Pretty much one is going to be high, two will be medium, and three is going to be low for your fan speeds. Down below is going to be where our fuse panel box is located, or our control. Anything that runs on 110 is going to be on, on pretty much all right here. And it is labeled to tell you what is what. So with your recliners here, pretty much to pull the recliners up, just simple pull them up. You, these guys do have lights, just double tap to turn the light on. Lights up underneath and below, above. One thing that you do have to be noteful of, I'm sorry, is that this does have to be secured during travel. Best way to do that is just try to take it around like so. And then you're going to try to lock and pretty much lock it in. All right. We got our light switch here for these lights underneath. This light here turns on our ambience lights up above. This guy does open up to a bed. Pretty much you're going to move your cushions here. Side lifts, you got two legs that you would pull out. Comes forward. And then your back piece here will just fold down. And then you put your two cushions back there in the back corner. And that's all there really is for that guy. It's pretty simple. These guys here, there's a little button underneath that you push to turn those guys on. Oh, so you want to make sure your chairs are going to be secured during travel. There is a couple different ways. Some people can, you know, some people will set them upright. Some people will lay them on the ground. Whatever kind of works for you will be best. Next, we have our GFCI. Pretty much, if uh, most of your outlets ain't working, come check this guy. Make sure he isn't tripped. Here, you got your little ambiance lights. Uh, this guy down here is going to be your LP carbon monoxide detector. Pretty much what we're doing is giving it a test. 
you always recommend that you always test that guy. Then we got another 110 outlet. We got storage here as well. This light here is just a little step light. And then inside here, we got our ceiling light here. So our first bunk here, pretty much these guys are locked in. Each one of these lights turn on by hand, but you're able to lift, pull it down. This is a fire exit window. So if they couldn't make their way to the door, they do have a way to escape. So for our bed here, let me go ahead and put this guy back up. This can travel up or down. It does not matter. So with this guy here, there is a couple of different ways to lock it in. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out here first. You're going to pull the handle. It's going to drop out like so. This does have a plug on it and USB charging ports. There is a handle right here to where they wanted to have it just slightly elevated. Pretty much it gives you two settings there. Next setting would bring it all the way back down. Whenever you go to... And then to lock this back in, you just push through here, snap in, lock in. You have the centerpiece. Oh, our centerpiece does also fold out as well. You got your cabinets here on each side. Uh, these guys do not have locks on the insides. They have a slow style closing hinge. Uh, please note, uh, when you're going down the road, these things are going to be doing this down the road. I can just tell you that now. I'm sorry it is a poor design for, through the manufacturer with these. Um, so just be mindful if they get a little banged up. Uh, just use like a, a crayon, you kind of heat a crayon up, kind of touch it up. Um, or they have furniture markers, you kind of touch them up, but they will get end up be getting beat up as they're going down the road. Just have to let you know that, or be aware of that. Uh, pretty much where we're going to mount the other uh, TV mount for the kids' room. And then our cable and satellite hookups here. Plug. You do have a secondary plug up here. So if they had a DVD player or a gaming console, uh, and there's actually a hole right here to where you can actually run the wires through. This one here is stationary. Also a fire exit window. No, 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 that one is not. My apologies. Just got the hidden on it. Uh, just a standard pool and uh, slides open. And then the same bunk bed underneath. Here in the bedroom, or in the bathroom here, this is what I was talking about. You do want to make sure that this is going to be locked during travel. But pretty much inside here, we're going to have the same concept. You've got your light switch, uh, just the toilet and the sink that are tied together. you got your fan, open and close, medicine cabinet, you got a 110 plug. Uh, you know, nothing fancy in this bathroom. It's just basic, basic bathroom. But like I said, during travel, it is always very important that this door is going to be shut and you do have it locked, like so. This door here also has a snap lock that you do want to make sure you snap lock also. I'm not going to do that at this time because I want to be able to watch my slide rooms as they come in. So I will not shut and lock this till after I've seen the slide rooms brought in. Just to make sure that everything is good. We have the radio. This guy is also your DVD player. And it does play CDs. Uh, nothing super fancy about this. Uh, this guy here is going to be what changes what mode you're wanting to use. Uh, you got optical, which there's nothing hooked to it. You got DVD player. HDMI, there is nothing there hooked up to that. And then you have your Bluetooth. Then you have TV. This is tied into the TV. So if the TV was on, you would have sound coming through our speaker. And then auxiliary, which is nothing. And then back to the radio. 
So you do have three different speaker zones. You have speaker zone A, which is going to be these speakers here. Speaker zone B is going to be just two speakers on the ceiling above there near the entry doors. And then speaker zone C is going to be those outside speakers. You can have them all on at the same time if you wanted to, or if you just want individual ones on. Just know if you are watching a movie, make sure you have those outside speakers turned off so they ain't watching the movie with you. It does have a USB hookup, an auxiliary hookup here. You got storage down below here. Uh, down below is going to be our fireplace. Uh, I don't know where she put our stuff at. I had our stuff on the table there. Oh, we'll have to find my cleaner to find out where she put our stuff because I had everything on our table. To the, to the TV in a little bit, try to find our remotes here. With the fireplace, you do have the manual controls. There is also a remote for him as well. Uh, pretty much to turn him on is the power button. And from the next, you would have you can change your flame settings. And after that, you can change the color of the rocks. After that, you have low heat, high heat, and then just the ambiance look. And then the last one is a timer, 30 minutes to, I believe, 8 hours, 9 hours. Oh, I did this one. Shit, everything on the other side. So this remote here is going to be for your fireplace. This guy here will control the radio and DVD functions. And then our big moat right here is going to be for our TV. She's also got our keys in here, pretty much our purple key here while the TV's coming on. Our purple keys is going to operate our entry door, both the lock and deadbolt. The gray keys will control or lock all our compartment doors all the way around the coach. Simple two key functions, nothing, nothing complicated with that. So with the TV, whenever you get to a new area, you do got to scan for channels. Pretty much you're going to press the menu button. I normally just push the back arrow key one time to go to channels. Then I go down to auto scan, and then it will start scanning for the channels. Inside here is going to be the paperwork for most of the appliances in the coach. Pretty much goes over a lot of the uh, items. We've got our pantry area here. Inside here is going to be our attachments for all the vacuum cleaner, or for the vacuum. Our hoses, things along that nature. And then you got drawers as well. Next we do have the microwave. It's fairly self-explanatory. Uh, one thing you can do is set the timer, set the time on it. And you can go somewhere, if you come back, you see the time isn't set like it is now. You can tell, it can tell you that there was a potential power failure at your campsite. Um, and from there, you can find out if it was something at the campsite or if it was something from the electric company. You know, try to find that information out. Uh, with the stove, uh, with these style stoves, you do have to be plugged into 110 for it to have its spark. Pretty much, you would just turn it and it's going to spark. You do have your light. And this guy here is a fan. Pretty much, it's going to be down here. It's pretty much for the convection part of an oven. When you are cooking and you are done cooking and you've turned everything off on the oven, the fan, there is a cooler fan, cooling fan inside here that will blow that hot air out until it has cooled down. Okay, so you could have this off for about 20 minutes and you come over here and you still feel warm air coming out. It is by design trying to cool the oven down. Okay, so just be mindful of that. Right here you do have an extendable guy here that just pretty much snaps and locks in. Wherever you go to close it, there are two little handles down here in the bottom. You just unlock and then it will lay down. Always make sure it's down position whenever you travel. This here is going to be your travel lock for the fridge.
recommended you always use this traveling or else you will cause damage. Pretty much inside here though is the residential style fridge. I did leave the box in here for the filter info. Uh, that is important. Anytime you go to winterize the unit uh, in the winter time you have to winterize the ice maker on this. So pretty much once that happens this filter will be junk. You will have to go out and buy a new one. To replace that filter it's going to be right inside here. Pretty much you just pull this down. This guy will come down and it twists to come out. I did leave the instructions inside here as well. You can adjust the refrigerator setting. As low I believe is 33 degrees as you can see. 35 is usually a pretty good number. Freezer can go as low as, let's see, minus 5. So we just like to leave that guy at zero. It will let you know if there's an issue with the water filter. And then it does have an option to make quick ice. Uh, if you're going to do that option, please make sure you're hooked to the city water because it can drain your water, your fresh water tank fairly quickly. And it did as mine. Then pretty much you got your freezer. As you see here, we did make ice. Go ahead and kind of show you. You can also see in there where we have pink ice because it was winterized. So I did cycle our ice maker to try to get all that pink ice out of there. I am going to actually dump that out. There is an on and off switch for the ice maker as well located down here. So if you didn't want to run the ice, you can turn this off. The bypass for him is actually going to be located underneath this slide room. I will actually show you that when we step back outside here in just a second. I'll show you that real quick so you guys know where that is at. Uh, then you got your fire extinguisher here. Uh, pretty much your entry door, you got your deadbolt to lock and unlock. This is going to be opening your door. This closes the door. And then you can have just the screen. If you wanted to, step out here real quick. Uh, we are pretty much done with the walkthrough of your camper, but I am going to kind of show you where this is located. I'm going to go ahead and take the camera here. Pretty much right back here. You got a drain valve so you can drain it. And then this here is going to stop the water flow. This little push guy right here. Pretty much, you're going to pull it out. And that pretty much is the shutoff, so no water would go to the refrigerator. And then from there, you can push it in, and that will let the water come through. As you see, that valve is not easy to pull or push. Okay, so please be mindful of that. All right, so other than that, that is pretty much the concludes our walkthrough with your coach. I hope I was fairly explanatory enough for you guys, and I hope you guys get to enjoy this soon. And if you guys do have any questions, do not hesitate to call. Thank you, and have a great day.